Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Your Hope for Tomorrow. So um, last week I said I was going to go into the three or the third contributing factor of domestic violence, you know, but um, since then um, I came across a story, you know, that I wanted to share about a domestic violence that um, incident that took place in Houston, Texas. So, um, and it was very heart wrenching, you know, um, a nine year old, uh, a nine year old little girl uh, was killed um, in a domestic violence incident. So I just want to kind of like read the story um, you know, to share uh, what has been reported so far on this um, matter. So um, this is from, I'm reading this story from KHOU11. Yeah, so get my glasses on. Okay, so I'm gonna skip over some parts, you know, um, but so this, the, the mother of a nine-year-old shooting victim said suspect threatened to kill her a week ago. So this suspect, according to this article, the suspect um, uh, threatened to kill the mother of this nine-year-old a week ago. So it says, according to court documents, Jones was out on five different bonds in Harris County when he allegedly shot Kylie Sorrells and her mom, Brittany. So, okay. The mother of a little girl shot and killed in the Heights Monday said the man charged with her murder came to their apartment with a gun last week. Court documents say Brittany Sorrell said Jeremiah Jones, her ex-boyfriend, threatened to kill her. It's not clear if she filed a police report when it happened, but police said she had filed complaints against him in the past. Okay, so it says Jones, 22, was arrested Tuesday night and charged with capital murder for the shooting death of nine-year-old Kylie Sorrells. He's also charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon because the girl's mom was also shot Monday night at their apartment complex on Oxford Street. Okay, so then it goes into his um, the, sus the suspect's criminal history. So I'm not going to read that. I'm going to go down to um, uh, the next part of the article. So it says domestic disturbance ends in tragedy. Court documents tell the story of what happened leading up to the shooting. Sorrell said Jones returned to the apartment she shares with her three children and a cousin Monday night around 10 p.m. The cousin was outside and tried to call and warn her, but by the time she answered the phone, Jones had already entered through the unlocked front door. Sorrell says she was in bed watching a movie with her three daughters when Jones barged in. He ripped the television from the wall saying it belonged to him. Sorrell says she broke up with Jones two months ago, but he was in a jealous rage and accused her of seeing other men. After demanding her phone, he went back to the bedroom and shot Kylie in the head. According to Sorrell's, she said he then shot her in the shoulder and left. Kylie was rushed to the hospital but didn't survive. Her mom was treated for a gunshot wound and released. Sorrell's seven-year-old and one-year-old daughters weren't physically harmed, but they apparently saw their sister get shot. Her mom, Brittany Sorrell, said the Windsor v Village Elementary School student was a good basketball player who loved to make TikTok videos. She was also in a program with the Houston Police Department. This senseless act of domestic violence hits home for me and the HPD family. That sweet child was a student and member of our Police Activities League PAL program. Police Chief Troy Finner said, please pray for this angel, her mother, and her family. Okay, so, um, and she, um, of course, was a beautiful little girl whose life was um, taken, you know, 
much too soon. So <clears throat> I wanted to um, read this article, you know, because like I said, I came across the story the other day and really, like I said, it, it was just so heart wrenching, you know, um, <clears throat> to, to see that an incident um, like this, you know, uh, happen, you know, in the first place. And what's like really um, just so terrible is that this little girl, you know, a uh, nine-year-old little girl uh, who they, ident you know, who, who they um, identified as a sweet child with a pr like a promising future, life was taken through this incident. You know, um, this is why... I come on here and do what I do, you know, to bring um, awareness um, uh, to domestic violence and also to use it as a prevention measure. You know, um, this is really sad. You know, this is something that uh, did not have to happen. And um, according to this article, um, he was out on different uh, bonds, you know, um, and, you know, basically they were saying, I, I skipped that part, but basically they were just saying that, you know, everybody has a right to, you know, a bond and everything. But if you are out on bond and you commit a, another crime while you're out on bond, like why were you um, allowed to be bonded again pretty much, you know? So, but like I said, it's a tragedy that uh, did not have to happen, should not have um, happened. And because of it, uh, a young girl's life is gone, you know, and her mother, you know, um, was shot as well and then her other two children had to witness you know this tragic and horrible event which they're probably going to um i'm sure i'm sure be traumatized after um this you know so like i said this is why i come on here with this show you know with this platform to bring awareness to domestic violence you know um there's many people doing their part and this is me doing mine you know to um really just like uh bring this issue to the forefront so we can prevent more tragedies like this from happening you know also last night you know while um my husband was watching the news i didn't catch the whole story but there was an incident i'm not sure where it took place where there was a woman who um was on there uh talking about how her um uh her husband uh killed their three children he drowned them you know and the, here's another mother who now has to deal with the death of her children you know because she uh chose to leave uh, a violent relationship you know so when i get more information on that one i will come share that story as well you know but really like you know, it's, 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 it's like words can't even express, you know, um, how devastating this is, you know, um, the news of the loss of these children's lives, you know, it's just really, it's words cannot even express, you know, how devastating this is. But I just wanted to bring this story um, uh, to, um, to this platform, you know, in hopes of, of, of getting um you know um you know this message out even more you know that domestic violence really like it's really it, it's time for this 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 madness that exactly this evil this madness to stop to end you know and i heard someone um give a quote i think they said it was a quote from dr miles monroe and um he said that the uh, the oppressor and the oppressed both needs help, you know, 
And I totally agree with that statement, you know, because we have to stop, put an end to um, the oppressed, which I will be uh, referred to as the abuser uh, from abusing people, you know, and then we have to also put a stop to um, the oppressed, which I refer uh, I refer to as the abuse from uh, from being abused. So that's why um, the oppressed and the oppressor both need um, domestic violence education and resources because for this uh, issue to be eradicated, both parties, the oppressed and the oppressor, needs to be healed, need to be set free, need to be delivered, you know, so these uh, situations do not continue to perpetuate, you know, um, throughout our um, uh, co communities and, you know, in these um, men and women's, these families' lives, you know, I, I forgot what was the title of the video, but I talked about like, if you know you are suffering or dealing with anger issues, you know, there are so many resources, you know, that, that is, that are available to help people that are in these situations, you know, so take advantage of them. You know, take advantage of them. Like I said uh, in, in, in another video, like you can't, you know, hold people hostage to your anger. You know, you can't hold people hostage to your insecurities. You, you just can't do that. You know, go get you the help that you need. You know, ladies, <clears throat> for the women that are listening to this video, I have a, a website um, called Sisters of Lifting Sisters that you can go to to be, um, you know, educated and empowered on these matters, you know, so you can get the, the help and the healing you need to uh, be able to identify someone who may be trying to enter your life with these abusive tendencies. And I also have the Sisters of Lifting Sisters Facebook group, you know, that you can also... Um, uh, come in to join and come in to, to um, also receive uh, the resources and the help you need as well, you know, to, um, to, to avoid um, entering into these types of relationships. You know, like one of our models says, healthy you, <clears throat> healthy life, healthy love. You got to get healthy. You got to get healthy. You have to understand and realize like, okay, um, what's going on within me that allows me to enter or entertain these types of relationships, you know, because that's the place where I had to get to, you know, I had to look at myself and say, what was going on in me? Not saying that I deserved that, you know, um, a, an abusive relationship, not saying that I was um, blaming myself for uh, being in an abusive relationship, but at the same time, taking the responsibility of saying, I'm going to work on me so I will not enter and entertain no other uh, abusive relationship again. So that's why, I, like I said, that's why I come on here and do what I do. And um, I just pray that, you know, if so you know, if anyone who's watching this video, if it, anybody that knows about DVTV and, and the show, Your Hope for Tomorrow, and the we Sisters of Lifted, the most on, sorry, of <laughs> and the Sisters of Lifted Sisters platform, you know, tell them about it. If, if you know somebody who's in need of it, tell them about it, you know, so we can work to, um, to really, to uh, eradicate curb, you know, put a stop to the issues of domestic violence. So that's all I have for today. Like I said, I just wanted to come and share, you know, this devastating story of this little girl losing her life and, you know, her mom, 
you know, um, now having to deal with the loss of her daughter, you know, and the, tra and the trauma that her other kids suffered, you know, so I just wanted to share this story with you all. So um, I'll talk to you all next time for another episode of Your Hope for Tomorrow. God bless and take care.